So here's an example of a MATLAB function that involves a for loop that can't be vectorized. This function generates the first n numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. So here we've assigned the first two elements to be equal to 1. Remember the Fibonacci sequence is related as like 1, 1, and then the next element is 2. It's equal to the sum of the previous two elements. So the next element is 3, which is equal to 2 plus 1. The next element would be 5, which is 3 plus 2. The next element is 8, which is 5 plus 3 then 13, 21, and so on. So again, what's happening here is we have later elements, like 5, that depends on the 3 and the 2. So these get added to make 5. And since, these, since 5 is dependent on elements in the same vector, this actually can't be vectorized. We need to use a for loop to generate this vector. The for loop is fairly simple, though. So we can't. We need the previous two elements, so we will manually do the first two. Fib 1 and Fib 2 will both be equal to 1. And then we will use a for loop to generate the rest, where you'll see we've just used this for loop and our array addressing to implement this same idea in general. So now index is a scalar. It's going to be a scalar and it's going to vary from 3 to n. As we go through the loop. And then we're just using these element addresses here, index minus 1 and index minus 2, to always just take the previous two elements in the Fibonacci vector, add them, and assign that to the current element index in the Fibonacci vector. So what I want to do now is actually go over to MATLAB and run this code in the debugger. It can be helpful to run this in debug mode and look in the workspace and see what's actually happening as these vectors are generated. So let's go over to MATLAB. Okay, so now we're in MATLAB and I've set this up. I've already called this function, fibgenerator, from the command window with, uh, to generate the first 10 elements of the Fibonacci sequence. And I've got uh, the display set up here so you can see the function. You can see I've set a breakpoint here at line 4, so we're about to execute the first command. And then down below I'm showing the workspace. So, so far the 10 has come in and been assigned to the variable n, since that was my input to the function. And so what I'm going to do is just step through this function. We covered this early in the quarter. Um, this is where it can become really useful to understand what's going on with these loops. Also, sometimes if you've got a problem in your code, um, using these debugging features can be the best way to solve it. So I'm going to use the step button here to step through. So you see as we execute that command, we've assigned down here in the workspace, fib has gotten its first value 1. We'll execute the next command. And now fib has two values. 1 and 1, and now we're going to go into the for loop. And you'll see as we go to the for loop here, I'm just using the colon operator. The default in the colon operator is 1, so this right-hand side creates a matrix 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all the way to n, which is 10, but that's not assigned to any variable index, so it won't show up in the workspace. So let's execute that command, and we'll see index is just equal to the first element in that matrix, which is 3. Now we'll execute this next command. So now we're going to take index minus 1, which is fib2, and index minus 2, which is fib1, and add them together to generate the next value. So here we go. We'll step. And now we've generated the third value of fib if you look in the workspace. 
Then we get to end, and what happens next is this will go back to the for command, increment index one more element along this vector. So next index will equal four, so we'll do this. Now you'll see in the workspace index equals four, and we will generate the fourth element of fib. And again, scrolling through, now index equals five, and we'll generate the fifth element of fib. Now index equals six, we generate the sixth element. And you can see those generating in the work, workspace as we build this array, or build this vector. So we'll step a couple more times to finish it up. There's index equals seven, index equals eight, index equals index equals 9, index equals 10, and then we end, and you'll see that at, once we leave the function, um, obviously those variables, this workspace will be destroyed, and back in the command window workspace, there's our fibs, is what I assigned it to, and it gets those results. So let's go back to the main presentation and continue. I would encourage you to download this M file. I've got it here in the video folder for you to download and do this yourself and really make sure you understand what's going on with this for loop and the vector creation of fib. Okay, so just want to point out a couple more things. Uh, I forgot to mention you know, what's going on with this vector here. So just to be really clear what's happening with this vector 3 to n so when, once we know n, in this case we used just in the previous example that it was 10. So as soon as that's set, what's happening here is first we're creating this vector 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then the for loop is going to step the value of index through each element in that vector. 3, 4, 5, each pass through the loop index equals a different value, we're using the previous two values of fib to generate the next value of fib. Hopefully you were able to see that using the debugger in the previous section and maybe trying it out on your own. One thing you might have also noticed is there's a little warning here and the warning on fib is basically says to pre-allocate Uh, matrices for efficiency. And what's going on here in the program, since the size of the fib vector is changing each time through the loop, what's happening is each time through the loop, basically in the guts of the computer, MATLAB is destroying the old fib vector and creating a new fib vector. And that actually is less efficient computationally than if fib, if the fib vector already had 10 elements because we already know um, that we need 10 elements in fib we just don't know what they are so if we already had 10 elements in fib and we were just changing the values of elements we wouldn't be destroying and recreating a new vector every time through the loop so that goes a little more efficiently so let's see how we could change this uh, function so that we use pre-allocation to make it a little efficiently. So the thing to do here, in this case, it was really easy because we know the first two values are equal to one, so we'll just use ones and we'll create a column vector. We're gonna create here a 10 by one column vector. And then all we're doing as now we go through, the rest of the code is exactly the same no changes here, but instead of creating a new vector every time, this command here just changes. Now we're just changing the values in fib is much more efficient. than recreating a different sized fib or different sized vector each pass through the loop. So this doesn't really 
affect us too much when we're doing such simple programs as this, but this can become a really big deal when we get into large programs. And you can actually see how this makes the code run more efficiently. So let's look at a technique you can use to time your code. So here's these two functions. One is a fib generator one, and this was our first example where we manually uh, set fib one and fib two, and then we're creating a new vector of a different size each pass. And again, remember this other case here, case, here we've used pre-allocation pre-allocated fib and exactly how you pre-allocate you can always use the ones or zeros command and just you're just changing elements so the ones or zeros are the best way to pre-allocate so we pre-allocate and now in this case instead of creating a new vector what we're doing is we're just changing one element each pass and you see over here the tick and talk commands add this timer. So with the tick and talk commands, when we run it, I've shown the command window output, when we run it, we get this output on the elapsed time to run the code. And we see in the first case, it takes 0 0.0000017 seconds, which is 17 microseconds, which is not very long obviously it's fast it's instantaneous as far as we're concerned but with the pre-allocation we nearly cut that in half to nine microseconds in the second example to generate the first 20 elements of the Fibonacci sequence and that 50 percent reduction is typical and it can be even a, a greater reduction when we talk about much larger vectors and down the road uh, if you take engineering 240 for example we'll start doing things where you might have thousands of elements in a vector and in re big research computations or big engineering design computations you might have tens of thousands or millions of elements in a vector and this can make a huge difference in how long it takes to run the code so just to summarize uh, we've been talking about for loops and in general they can be used to repeatedly execute sets of commands. So again this is iterative because we're iterating through a set of commands. Iterative programming. And we use for loops when it's a set number of times. A fixed number of times. One thing we've noted is most programming tasks that would require for loops in other languages, I didn't necessarily say that, but a lot of other languages, Java, C++, don't have this ability to vectorize things. So most programming tasks, they would require for loops in other languages. They can be done much more efficiently in MATLAB using vectorized code. So I really want to emphasize here is we've been learning, how, we learned how to write vectorized code first we learned vector operations first and that's for a reason it's more efficient and just because we're learning for loops doesn't mean we want to change and use for loops for everything we want to use vector operations as our first option 99 percent of the time but sometimes for loops are going to be necessary and our first case that we looked at is that they're only necessary when building a vector in which the value of later elements in the vector depends on the value of earlier elements. Otherwise, except for some practice that we were going to do, otherwise it's always best to use vectorized code, use vectors. And that concludes this video.